now, but we let a little additional footage go for editing purposes. So anytime you're ready, five, four. Good morning. My name is Mike Judson. This is Jim Nelson. Good morning. And we're with Five Metals Living History Incorporated. Uh, Five Metals Living History is a 501c3 nonprofit. We're dedicated to education and preservation of our history. And um, because of our geography, we're kind of focused on the local history and especially during the uh, early 1800s, the War of 1812 era, when we saw a lot of activity here and just prior to statehood and settlement. So today we're set up here at Chautauqua Wawasee and we brought a number of artifacts, uh, both original and modern reproductions that we uh, plan to share with the public as they come through. So if you'd like, I can step inside and we can kind of walk through what those are and I'll explain them to you. I think I'll sit there. Uh, there were a number of professions that supported uh, life on the frontier as well as in the settlements and one of those was certainly blacksmithing and this first case um, i'll open this up so you get a better look just got some examples of cutlery or knives that would have been hand forged used for um, you know household work uh, as well as um, hunting as well as defense and also in this case we've got um, some things to support the use of the black powder muzzle-loading firearms and those would be um, lead bars which have been melted down to make um, the round ball used in the rifles and smooth bores and also the bullet molds as well as a lead ladle that we would hold over the, over the fire to melt the lead so these bullet molds um, we would if our lead was built or lead was uh, melted in the lead ladle and we would pour that through the opening in the ball mold and give that a moment to cool and we'd pop that open and a lead ball would pop out. So that was how the individual would uh, run ball as it was called for their gun. The other case, um, this would be an example, this was getting to the, uh, the culture of the relationship between the European American uh, governments and the Native Americans and one of the um, one of the symbols of that would be the peace medal and so the European Americans would present these to the Native Americans and it was a it was a, a reward or an award um, and also they would use it to uh, develop a prestige among the principal chiefs and so there's several examples in this case going back as early as 1757 for the British with the King George II medal. Um, and then we worked through with um, a um, just a peace and friendship medal dated 1790. The George Washington Oval from 1794. These are all reproductions, by the way. Um, a representative medal. This isn't the original Greenville medal. That would have been an, a large oval, but just a commemorative medal from Greenville, um, 1809 Treaty of Fort Wayne. And then the presidents all issued peace medals. So the Jefferson, here would be similar to what Lewis and Clark would have taken with them on their journey to present to the native tribes as they interacted with them. And then finally the James Madison Medal which would have been uh, prevalent during the War of 1812 era. And then moving on to this next case, um, just a kind of a variety of things in here. Um, to me, the most significant piece in here is an exact replica in size and make and design. An exact replica of this white belt. This is a wampum belt. And this is an exact replica of the belt that Chief Little Turtle presented to General Anthony Wayne in 1795 at the signing of the Treaty of Greenville. The blue belt is a, um, was uh, manufactured by a Potawatomi and that is a called a friendship belt and you can see the two figures in the middle which represent the white man and the native uh, as friends and this would the the bearer of this would receive a safe passage through the lands of both the Potawatomi um, and the um, Chippewa actually all three tribes uh, Potawatomi, Chippewa, Ottawa. Then we move over to some um, weaponry 
Um, just a replica or example of a, a um, British uh, heavy dragoon pistol, a common 18th century pistol that um, any anyone would potentially carry. And these were used for um, pistols. Of course, were just used for uh, in battle or self-defense. And then we have a, a model 1818. This is an original piece, a model 1818 cavalry sword, which has actually been cut down. It looks like it looks to me like it was probably cut down and used as a hunting sword. And it originally would have had a leather and, and wire wrap grip on it as well, but that is an original piece. Wow. <laughs> this is just an accumulation of um, original horns, um, except for the, um, the small salt and pepper horn and the, uh, the salt shaker in the middle here. Everything else in here are actual original pieces mid to late 19th century by this time the horns were smaller and they were used for um, just day trips or, or hunting uh, local hunting trips didn't require quite as much powder as what men would have carried west during the long hunter uh, period when they had to keep themselves provisioned for a long period of time but they're they're pretty neat they're all um, like I said they're all originals and they've just each got a lot of character um, you know someone made these um, to their own uh, design and specification some are very simple and there's some more intricate uh, work in some of them as well so just a, a piece of our history and um, if they I wish they could talk and just a, an example of uh, several styles of axes and um, these again were all these are all uh, reproduction pieces but they're all hand forged by blacksmiths. And you can see they each um, would serve various function. It's got the pole head axis so they can be used to, um, to hit something or drive a stake or um, whatever the, the owner desired to do with that. A working man's tool. If you, as long as you had a good ax uh, out in the wilderness, you could do just about anything you needed to do to survive out there. And then this final case, let's open that up so we can get a... These also, uh, this returns to the native culture. And these would be um, pouches used by the natives for whatever they, they wished, oftentimes for their um, shooting accoutrements. And I put the names of the um, makers on these bags, the individuals that actually crafted these. And they're based off, um, you know, based off extant um, articles that, that they were able to look at and design their bag from it. Mm.